Put yourself in this scenario. You're about to play an international master of chess in less than 24 hours. What would you do? What I did was I tried to prepare for the openings because I, I knew that opening theory was going to be one thing that if I didn't know the theory, I was probably going to come out of the first 10 moves dead lost. So this is what I did, and it really turned out pretty well for me considering the fact that, for those of you that don't know me, I am a 900 rated Blitz player at the time, and uh, this was an international master. So at the end of the day, I stole two and a half games out of 11, and I'll give you an idea of what I did to prepare for that. So we're going to start by looking at Keaton's profile. This is the IM that offered up his time to play me on stream. And you can see on chess.com, there's this explore games option. You can do it on Lee Chess as well. And then you can even go to an external source called, you know, something like opening tree where you plug in the profile and it'll branch out all the opening variations. But is, this is pretty much the same thing. So for this, you can see, okay, well, he plays a fair amount of E4 and D4. And I have more just knowledge against E4 anyway, so I went, decided to start with E4. And I always play the Karo Khan, so I can see that Karo Khan is pretty far down there in terms of what he typically sees. So you can see there's already not that many games here, right? But uh, this is where I had a little, little bit of an advantage with uh, knowing that his student told me he was going to play the Tartikauer variation, that he's been liking that a lot. And you can see, right? Even though he plays knight d2 a lot, he also plays knight c3 and wins more. So I went ahead and prepared against the Tartikauer variation, which is something I'm pretty darn familiar with. So I was pretty happy to see this. And I always open up here. And basically the whole point of the Tartikauer is that you castle and you get this knight over to f8. Because what ends up happening in the main line, you get c3, you get bishop here, you get a battery kind of facing this pawn. So you, you need the knight on f8. It's a unique opening, uh, but you need the knight on f8 to kind of protect that pawn and that square, especially when you short castle. Um, g3 seems like some sort of dynamite move, but uh, to be honest, you know, you start seeing this, this setup that I was talking about. We're through 10 moves almost, and the knight is on f8. I go to the analysis board, and this is telling me that through 10 moves, if this is the opening that happens, it's pretty much dead even. It, it's plus 0.29 for white. So I think that knowing that if this is his tendency to play this G3 idea, then uh, I'm not too particularly scared of his response to my Karo Khan. Are you ready? We're moving on to D4. And uh, if you felt a little rushed to answer that, I also felt rushed to learn my response against D4 because I learned, uh, I prepped this one 30 minutes before the stream and it was not as in depth as I wanted it to be. But against D4, I always play knight F6 because it's flexible. If I see the bishop come out for a London, I always play the King's Indian, uh, which is setting up like this um, with D6. And if I see D4, C4, I try and play the Nimzo. Uh, if they develop the knight, I uh, normally try and pin it. And, uh, you know, so I was thinking, okay, against d4, knight f6, very natural. But, listen up here. Uh, at my level, I never run into this opening. This opening is the Trompowski. It is typically played at a level higher than uh, 1200 rapid. So, it is not anything I've seen before, but that is the IM's main choice of opening after d4 so i figured let me try and do something that is not super mainline to make sure i get him slightly out of his comfort zone and just find a playable position right and so i said out of the top few moves he seems to struggle the most against knight e4 so i clicked on knight e4 he always backs up his bishop here because it comes with tempo and then uh, the most popular move after that is c5 and the idea of c5 is that you you immediately attack the center and uh, If they take the knight comes back and takes but he does not take he normally just says hey I will push kick your knight out bring it back and then take And from here I was thinking 
Okay, well one move is this queen a5 check. And for me, I was thinking, do I really want to have an early queen attack uh, against an IM that will likely punish any sort of inaccuracy afterwards? So I figured, let me go with the second most popular move, this knight a6 idea to go ahead and win the pawn back, to which he normally responds with this idea to push, to take control of the center with his center pawns. But after knight takes c5, I'm actually happy. And I clicked on the engine after this. This is only seven moves, so I didn't do as much prep. Like I said, it was only half an hour before the stream. But after seven moves, this seems playable to me just conceptually as a beginner. Uh, I think that I have two knights developed. I'm analyzing this as, sure, he has a few more pawns and, uh, you know, controlling space in the center, but he's missing a D-pawn, right? He's missing a D-pawn, and I have both my center pawns that I can eventually push some degree to open up lines for uh, at least one of the bishops and maybe fan Keller the other so the engine says it's plus 0.9 but uh, you know it looked like something that was reasonable in terms of a very short um, timeline of preparation so this is why I went with against his Trompowski attack if you made it this far in the video Here's your reminder to stay hydrated. Staying hydrated can keep your brain functioning at higher levels to play higher level chess. And if you made this far in the video and you've enjoyed the content, remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below for more content like this. Back to the video. Now we get to the fun part where I get to play as white. And when I normally play other chess beginners, I play e4 thinking that I'm gonna play the Vienna game. But Keaton's an international master and as all title players do, they play the Sicilian. So uh, you can see he plays the Sicilian in more than 90% of his games. And against the Sicilian, I like to play the Alpin variation, which is where you basically go for c3, d4, and if black takes and you take back, you still have your two pawns in the center, and um, you know if, if black pushes d5, you can just push e5 and get into this sort of advanced French variation of uh, pawn structures. So for me, it's like, how can I play a Sicilian without truly playing a Sicilian? And, um, you know, you'll see that his most common response is not d5, but in fact, knight f6. And against knight f6, uh, you know, it's pretty natural to just push the pawn, attack the knight, make a move, and then here go d4 anyway. And after takes, my usual response is to take back. But I see that, you know, this is like the second most common option. For some reason, I think I got confused because somehow my prep went bishop to c4. And you can see that it's 91% of the time Keaton, the IM, actually wins when bishop c4 is played. Now, I probably got colors mixed up. And I thought, oh, like, I'll win 91% of the, the time if I play that. But fortunately, when I go to an analysis board and I look at the engine, it says that's pretty much dead even. So at least uh, whatever I picked in that moment of inspiration, it was dead even. And, uh, and from here, you know, it simplifies the things a little bit. He plays pretty consistent moves. Uh, knight to b6, attacking the bishop come back. I like that the fact that this is a nice strong bishop seeing a lot of squares in the enemy territory. And here, he does this peculiar thing where he just pushes d5, inviting en passant. And so after en passant, not, uh, queen takes, I again went to the analysis board. I said, hey, what does this look like? What Like, you know, I'm running out of moves here for him uh, that I can explore. So what, what's, what does this look like on the analysis board? Well, naturally, you would think, oh, maybe uh, pawn takes back. You know, this is going to get a little ugly. But the top engine move is actually knight to f3. Gambiting a pawn versus an international master was my plan. <laughs> so after uh, pawn takes pawn, my plan was to say, hey, let me isolate black's pawn on the d file and create a target later. And from here... I was saying, hey, I'm gambiting that pawn, but now look at my development. My development, I have three pieces developed. I can short castle the next move, and I can start making a target out of the D-pawn. So for me, I thought, hey, 10 moves in, it says it's even, but 
the ease of play is, is it makes a world of difference for me. So as a beginner, I'm thinking, okay, this seems like an easy win for the opening uh, where I know, hey, I can come out and be functional. This is what I ended up going with, and you'll see in the results I'm about to share, it actually turned out for some pretty good games. And um, yeah, the next part of this video will be me doing a quick summary of how every single game went. So here we are. Here are the results from the match I played against Keaton. And you can see that the first couple of games we played very even time. And after that, he started having three minutes, then one minute versus my five minutes. And uh, to be honest, if you look at the, the openings or how long I lasted before getting into a losing position, uh, it's, you know, an average of 19, almost 20 moves. So you can tell that I was getting out of the opening without, you know, too much trouble. And I kind of considered even uh, basically anything that's not one full material point uh, per the chess engine. So you can see that, you know, the weakest opening was against the Trompowski. Makes sense. I had the least amount of time to prepare it. Uh, and uh, you can see that the strongest ones were, you know, the Tartikauer or the Sicilian Alapin. Um, those were the ones that really, uh, at least with the Karakhan, I had previous knowledge of how to play it. With a Sicilian Alapin, uh, there were, you know, like, like I showed you in that, um, you know, opening preparation, uh, I was comfortable with a very simplified approach. Queens off the board, Peaches is developed already, playing against an isolated pawn, even though I was down a pawn. And that really helped me kind of move and navigate through the middle game. So this was my uh, experience doing a very uh, serious for me as a beginner opening prep, but I am all about learning on this channel. So let me know what you would have done differently uh, or what your thoughts are on the process in general. And uh, I, you know, I recognize that I'm not at the top of the mountain. I'm still climbing. So would love to hear your feedback. Let me know it in the comments below. Happy learning, everyone.